Okay, so we're going to go back and uh, talk now about the energy of the one electron system. We actually talk about it when we discuss the Bohr model. Um, the Bohr, when I talk about the Bohr model, I uh, specifically you know, spend a lot of time just talking about the hydrogen atom, which has just one proton and one electron. But if you want to apply the Bohr model and the Bohr equation to the other atoms that, or other ions, I should say, that have uh, only one electron, we basically have to modify the equation of the Bohr model so that it looks like this. And this is something that I uh, have mentioned before. If you look at the last video in the uh, Bohr model sec uh, section of the, the lecture, you'll see that um, this equation was presented as a, as a way to calculate the energy of electron in one electron system but if you necessarily you know if you don't have one proton only so remember that if you only have one proton this equation just becomes negative rh one over n square and of course that's the energy of the hydrogen atom okay now what i want you to remember is some of the definitions of these these uh, energy terms here uh, we're not going to even though we're going to use the Bohr equation but the interpretation we get is also from the quantum model because both the, mo the Bohr model and the quantum model work uh, equally well to explain the behavior of this one electron system. So E sub n uh, is remember this, that's the energy of the electron in a particular orbit, a uh, Bohr orbit. We can now call it shell because n is also called a shell. So in other words this is also the energy of the electron in that particular principal quantum number. So if I was talking about the n equals one uh, shell, then I would talk, or orbitals in that shell, then I would talk about the energy of electron in that particular uh, shell, okay? So E sub n is equal to negative Rh, and remember Rh is uh, what we call the Rydberg constant. It has this value, 2.178 or 2.18, a lot of times, times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And then we have two things here that the Rydberg constant is multiplied to, z square over n square. Z, remember, is the atomic number. That's the number of protons you have in your uh, system. For the hydrogen atom, remember, it's 1, and that's why the equations for the hydrogen atom is only negative Rh1 over n squared. Uh, if you have the lithium 2 plus ion, lithium has 3 protons, so this would be 3 squared. Okay? Now, n here is, remember, that's the orbit number, right? That's, that's the Bohr orbit number. So if you have your nucleus in the middle, uh, here you have this is n equals 1, this is n equals 2, this is n equals 3. Now again the z here, the nucleus could be plus 1, plus 2, plus 3 or whatever depending on what kind of ion we're talking about. N, uh, so n represents your Bohr orbit but in the quantum model n is called the principal quantum number. Um, and if you think about this z and the n, you know again with respect to the discussion about electrostatic interaction Z basically is a measure of the charge, right? It's a measure of how much charge the, the nucleus has, okay? And of course, that's going to determine how strong the interaction is. If the nucleus has a lot of charge, is very positive, then the interaction between the electron and the nucleus, so that corresponds to the, the charge factor, right, of the electrostatic interaction. Uh, the, char the larger the charge, the larger, the, the more protons you have, the stronger the interaction is going to be. Now, the n component here is basically a measure of the uh, distance factor, right? If you think about it, the larger n is, the further away the electron is, which means the weaker the energy is. Now, think about, uh, that, think about how that plays into this equation, okay? Just, you know, think about substituting some numbers in here, okay? Let, let me say if I, let's, let's keep z at 1, for example, okay? So if z is 1, then the energy is negative Rh1 over n squared. If z is 2, then you get negative Rh2 squared over n squared, which is 4 over n squared. Automatically, the energy of the, a system that has z equals 2, it's a lot lower, right? Because this is a negative number, remember? So uh, let me just show you in a, in a scratch paper to kind of illustrate this. So let's look at the, some simple calculation with this equation, okay? So the equation looks like this, negative Rh times Z squared over N squared. 
So I'm just going to for now keep the same number for n and I want to change uh, the value of z. Okay. So what you see is that if I were to change z from 1 to 2 to 3, my energy would be negative rh if it's 1, negative 4rh if it's 2, and negative 9rh if it's 3, right? Because it's a square of all these numbers. Now you can see that in terms of energy, what has happened? If I were to draw this in an energy diagram, okay, let me just bring this down here uh, real quick. If I draw this in a terms of energy diagram, okay, uh, so again, you know, remember that we used to do this for, um, uh, you know, for energy when we're talking about the Bohr model, when we did thermodynamics, we also have this type of energy diagram. RH is right here, negative RH. Negative 4 RH is a much more negative number than negative RH, right? So it'd be below negative uh, RH. Negative 9 RH would be even more negative, so it's even lower. And so what's that say? That says that this electron, right, that has z equals 3 is a much more stable electron than the electron where z is only equal to 2, which is much more stable than the electron where z is only equal to 1. But of course that makes sense. That makes sense from a physical point of view because remember that z corresponds to the charge on the proton. So uh, charge on the nucleus, I should say. So if the nucleus has, has more protons, then the interaction with the electron will be stronger so then the electron is more stable as a result okay now let's look at n how n influences the value of energy so now what we're gonna do is uh, instead of changing z we're gonna change n and plug it into back the equation and if you see if I keep z at 1 and any uh, changes to 1 to 2 to 3 these are the energy values I'm gonna get negative rh negative rh over 4 negative rh over 9 now, in terms of an energy diagram, if you plot this down here, negative RH is right here. Negative RH over 4 is only a quarter, right, one-fourth of RH, which means that it's less negative, so it's above negative RH. And negative RH over 9 is, of course, even only one-ninth of the value of RH, so it's going to be even less negative, so it's going to be top here. So what that says is that as you increase the value of N, you find that the electron becomes less and less stable, right? Because the value of the energy goes higher and higher, which means that it's more unstable. And that again makes sense because if you look at the physical picture of this, when the electron goes from n equals 1 to n equals 2 to n equals 3, it's further and further away from the proton. And of course, when we talk about electrostatic interaction, distance is an important factor. So if the distance of the electron in the proton or the electron in the nucleus is further away, the electron is less stable. Uh, it has less of an attraction to the, to the proton, so as a result it's not as, you know, as stable as it was if it's closer to the proton. Okay? So the equation makes sense uh, in terms of our analysis of the physical picture of what's going on. Now, let's think about now how to calculate the energy of various orbitals using this equation. So what I want to do now is discuss what the energy of different orbitals are in a one electron system. So remember that we have our 1s orbital, that's the, the lowest we can have in terms of the quantum number, right? The principal quantum number starts from 1, so 1s orbital is the only orbital we can have in principal quantum number 1. When we got to principal quantum number 2, n equals 2, we can have either 2s or 2p. And then when we go to level 3, principal quantum number 3 we can have either 3s, 3p, or 3d orbital. Now what I'm listing here is the energy uh, and I noticed that I made a, a, a typo here there's two negatives on all of these so I'm gonna take out all the negatives but you should only see one negative um, but these are the energies of the orbitals of each of these orbital. How do I get this energy? Basically by plugging in, into the Bohr equation uh, in the same way that I just did earlier when I was calculating uh, the energy for the various values of z and n, okay? So let me, let me show you how to do this for uh, the n equals 1, right? So when e, you know, the equation looks like this, if n is equal to 1, then uh, the energy with n equals to 1 will just be 1 at the bottom, which is just 1 squared, which is just 1, then it will just be negative rh z squared. Uh, if n is equal to 2, we actually did this earlier as well, if n is equal to 2, then e of 2 is going to be negative rh z squared 
and then this is 2 so 2 squared is 4 so it will be over 4 okay so that's what I did there in terms of calculating those values I'm going to go back to the slide now and what you see is that in one s orbital because the n is equal to 1 in this case then we have negative rh z squared when we have 2 s orbital because the n is equal to 2 we have negative rh z squared over 4 when we have 2p orbital because the n is still equal to 2 our energy is negative rh z squared over 4 in other words the energy of the electron for an one electron system for a 2s and 2p orbital is exactly the same it's identical and then when we have 3 uh, n equals 3 orbital whether you're in 3s 3p or 3d your energy is always negative rh z squared over 9 so I want to write this conclusion here at the bottom based on the discussion we just had that for a one electron system the energy of uh, the electron only depends on n which is the first number here okay so it doesn't really depend on whether you're in s or p or d orbital and as a result all orbitals with the same principal quantum number are what we refer to as degenerate orbitals degenerate here has a special meaning in um, chemistry or in quantum mechanics and that means that the orbitals all have the same energy and you can see it in the calculation 3s, 3p, and 3d all have the same exact energy. What that means is if we were to draw the energy diagram for let's say the hydrogen atom which is a one electron atom or any one electron atom this is what we're gonna see. We're gonna see that the 1s electron is going to be the lowest in energy. The lowest energy is 1s because uh, remember in our prior calculation we showed that the value of the energy in the 1s uh, is negative rhz squared and that's the lowest negative number because everything else is uh, less negative right because if you take this number divided by 4 then it's a it's a less negative number compared to this one so when you move to um, the 2s orbital and the 2p orbital remember they have the same exact energy and that energy is going to be equal to negative rh uh, z square over 4 and then when you move to level 3 you're going to have negative rh z square over 9 but the key here is to note that whether your electron is in 3s 3p or 3d you have exactly the same energy um, and so that's referred to as degeneracy in terms of the orbital energy